Everyone knows that Mike Tyson was an absolute beast in his prime. He killed people with his ferocious stare and destroyed opponents with his fists. But there was one guy who always got the better of him. The guy refused to be beaten in a sparring match and later went on to defeat him in a boxing ring. With a record of 21 KOs out of 44 wins, the only boxer who held unified WBA, WBC, and IBF titles, today we are talking about the one and only the real deal Evander Holyfield. The beginning of the warrior. Raised by a single mother in the mill town of Atmore, Albania, Evander with his family moved to the crime-hitting bow and housing projects in Atlanta. He started boxing at the age of 8 years old, thanks to his coach Morgan, who had an eye for identifying talent. Evander was only 8 when his coach told him, you could be like Muhammad Ali. That lit the spark in him. He killed it in the amateur ranks and made his way to the American Olympic boxing team in 1984, which had one of the greatest squads in American boxing history. He was knocking out everybody. At 20 years of age, he won a silver medal for his country in Pan American Games. The same year he became the National Golden Gloves champion. After achieving so much at such an early stage of his career, he was supposed to fight Kevin Barry from New Zealand for the Summer Olympic Games semi-finals. He lost that fight due to a controversial disqualification. Many believe that it was the best Olympic Games robbery to ever take place. The start of his professional career was at light heavyweight. He moved to cruiserweight, then later to heavyweight, and then to the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. How can a man switch to extremely opposite divisions that fast? Well, just stick with us and we will tell you exactly how. Getting into the boxing business. For real. Evander Holyfield won his debut boxing match by a unanimous decision. In his debut, we could see the man is in the business for real. His punches were savage and brutal. The Olympic robbery he had been through made him quite popular. And with this promising start to his boxing career, he was clearly under the spotlight. That's why he got considered by many managers and promoters. The other two bouts in his light heavyweight division were also straightaway knockouts. He got Fred Brown down in the first round and left Mark Rivera out cold in the second. After breaking jaws in a light heavyweight, Vander with his opponent Tyrone Booz moved up to the cruiserweight division. The fight lasted 8 rounds and Tyrone came out as a winner. He knocked out the next two opponents in the first round and the second in the fifth round. He defeated three other ranked cruiserweight boxers and reached his way where he could stand tall against the cruiserweight champion of the world, Dwight Muhammad Kawi. It was time that this upcoming young gun could be tested against the champion in a 15 rounds bout. The championship bout lasted 15 rounds and Holyfield won the WBA cruiserweight title. After that, he won some non-title fights. And it was time when he would defend his championship against his ex-teammate and Olympic gold medalist Henry Tillman. In his amateur boxing career, Tillman defeated Mike Tyson twice. And it was time for Holyfield to be tested against a very tough boxer. Tillman gave Holyfield a tough time, but the champ successfully retained his title by knocking out Tillman in the seventh round. He unified his WBA title with the IBA title by knocking out Ricky Parkey in the third round. He again retained his title after an 11-round war against former champion Ossie Ocasio. Later, he offered a rematch to Kawi and knocked him out quickly this time in the fourth round. After defeating Linneal and WBC champion Sugar De Leon, he became a very significant figure in the boxing cruiserweight division. After being this much important in the division, it was time that Evander Holyfield move up to the heavyweight division, whose champion was the man who needs no introduction, the Iron Mike Tyson. Becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion, silencing Mike Tyson and the bite fight. Before meeting Tyson, Evander Holyfield knocked out the former world champion Bobby Chiz. Mike Tyson was known for his dangerous knockouts and not everyone dared to step in the ring with him. But the real deal Holyfield decided to face him for the WBA heavyweight championship. Back in the days when both these warriors turned into rivals, they were sparring partners. In 1984, they were amateur boxers from two different weight classes. And one day, a 21-year-old Evander Holyfield approached 17 years Mike Tyson to spar. In that sparring session, Holyfield took young Tyson into the corner and he couldn't get out. But the Olympic coach ended the session so that both upcoming megastars don't get hurt while training. When the session ended, Tyson praised Holyfield by saying, you're a good man. Vander replied, no man, 
you're just a kid. There was a four-year gap between the boxers, but they had mutual respect, which disappeared when both these men turned into fearless rivals. Mike Tyson at the time reclaimed his WBC and WBA heavyweight championships. The fight between him and Evander lasted for 11 rounds. It was a full entertainment package for the boxing fans, where Holyfield came out as a winner via TKO. This was something that no one expected. Holyfield beat the baddest man on the planet when he was on his way out of boxing. The interaction he had with him when he sparred with him ignited a fire within him that was inextinguishable. The friends who became enemies later were set to face each other again. This time, the fight took place in the famous MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. In their second bout, Kid Dynamite was annoyed by Holyfield's clinches and he bit his ear. The referee Mills Lane was about to disqualify Tyson before the ringside doctor intervened and said Evander could continue. The fight continued but Mike once again bit him, this time tearing a small piece off that ear. This time Tyson was officially disqualified and after the fight, he explained that it was his retaliation for the unchecked headbutts which made him cut. Before the fight took place, the experienced coach of Mike Tyson, Teddy Atlas, predicted that he would get disqualified, tagging him as a very weak and flawed person. In the history of pro boxing, this fight is known as the Bite Fight, which we can know more about by pressing the bell icon above. The time when the real deal Holyfield hung up his gloves. After fighting loads and loads of battles in a boxing ring, it was time that the legendary boxers hangs up his gloves. Like they say, whatever goes up must come down. Evander Holyfield has given us some joyful memories in a four-sided ring. Many fight fans after witnessing Holyfield's controversial wins against Lennox Lewis and John Ruiz thought that he is finished. He also tried to become the champion again, but John Ruiz managed to draw and maintain the WBA championship. It was time that Holyfield retires. His consecutive losses and a ban from New York Athletic Commission were enough indications that he doesn't have any more in him. The warrior rises again. Critics believe that the boxer was not that sharp and composed anymore. But Holyfield, deep inside, knew that it was his shoulder injury that was bothering him, not his old age. In 2006, the warrior came back to the battlefield and won four matches in 10 months. This comeback seemed promising and was enough to shut the critics up. Holyfield won most of his fights but also lost a few. But he gave some promising performances and showed that he is back in the game for real. Holyfield was about 50 when he was planning to fight for the world championship. But he made it clear by saying that he is done with the game. In an interview, he said, The game's been good to me and I hope I've been good to the game. I'm 50 years old and I've pretty much done everything that I wanted to do in boxing. Evander Holyfield was one of a kind. He broke many world records in his prime and silenced Mike Tyson when Tyson was in full swing. And he was way past his prime. Many athletes delivered in their prime and deteriorated with age. But Holyfield completely turned the tables especially when he came back later, knocking out some uprising young guns in the boxing business. No wonder he is one of the greatest heavyweight boxers of all time. What if Evander Holyfield had taken a shot at the championship against Vladimir or Vitaly Klitschko at the age of 50? Was he too old for that? Or his lethal comeback would have taken either of them? Let us know your opinion on this by commenting in the section below. If you're enjoying our content and want to see more, be sure to leave a like before subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads. And as always, thanks for watching and until next time.